So the political rivalry between the northern and the southern regions, a rivalry that's almost as old as this country, appears to be back with a vengeance over who will control the levers of power in this country in 2027. At every presidential election cycle, the issue rears up like some kind of hideous monster, threatening to erode whatever little unity has been achieved across the regions. But this time it appears to be getting more caustic, driven by a growing perception in the north that the presidency of Bola Tinubu, who is from the southwest, has not favoured the region. Hence their desire to turf him out of Aso Rock in 2027. But the secretary to the federal government, George Akuma, has reminded everyone of the principle of the eight-year rotation arrangement between the North and the South, making the point that any honest politician who believes in fairness and justice would hold their horses and allow the South to complete its turn. Well, that argument doesn't wash with the former vice president and 2023 presidential candidate of the main opposition PDP, Atiku Abubakar, who argues that, in fact, the South has violated that code of fairness by ruling the country for 17 years since 1999, while the North has only had 11 years. And by that reckoning, the zoning rotation should now go to the North in 2027. But given that Northerners have ruled Nigeria for 48 of its 64 years of independence, does that argument make sense? Well, for more on this, I'm joined now in the studio by the lawyer and National Publicity Secretary of the main opposition People's Democratic Party, or PDP, Debo Ologunaba, and by the political commentator, former Edo State Commissioner of Information and former Edo State Governorship aspirant, Prince Kasim Efebua, who is a leading member of the APC. Thank you very much indeed. Um, great to see you, Debo. I haven't seen you in a so while. Fascinating to see you. You're looking very good. Well, I don't know about that. And great to see you, Prince, as always. Let Thank me start you. with you, um, Debo. Please make the case for, um, I presume you're going to make the case for Atiku Abubakar, the point that he was making, which is that when you look at it, the South has ruled since 1999 yeah. for 17 years and the North for 11, and therefore the North should be given another chance. Thank you, Charles, and nice to see my brother here, my friend. It's good to be here. Well, I'm glad you I'm, guys are shaking hands. No, absolutely. We, I mean, we're friends. I, I was a bit worried it might come to blows. No, 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 no. I mean, like, I mean, this is... Or perhaps this, I should say I was rather hoping uh, it would come to blows. I, I just hope that we can have a conversation of as course. a nation. Yeah. And begin to look at the real issues, rather those semantics. I'm not here to speak for the North. Mm. I want to speak for this country. Indeed. And to speak for democracy, and for, to speak for good governance, and to speak for issue-based politics in this country. And until we recognize that as a people, then we'll continue to have this quarter every four years ritual of this kind of conversation. I think Nigerians should begin to ask questions in a more detailed form. An election just took place in Ghana, and the whole world seemed to be celebrating. Mm. I understand, without I can't confirm that, that even some institution or head of agencies in Nigeria that has to do with electoral matters are claiming some kind of credit for <laughs> that. Monumental well, achievement. I don't think they're claiming credit. They're saying that there were some things that the Ghanaians picked from Nigeria's well, uh, electoral well, system. Well, the good thing that... And perhaps obviously, managed it better. Obviously, obviously yeah. they must have picked the good things and run with it with integrity. And that is the challenge here. So for me, and for PDP that I speak for, I think what is more important for us as a people is to speak to the fact that democracy should be what it ought to be, mm. where the will of the people, indeed, where the institutions count, particularly mm. the INEC, with respect to Nigeria, do exactly what it should do, meaning conduct elections that are free, fair, credible. I reckon that not too many Nigerians bother where you come from. They bother more about whether a government indeed, can fulfill the expectation as provided for in the Constitution, Section 14, Subsection 2B, 
which says the welfare and security are the main purpose of government. I understand all I thought, that. I thought, for, for, so nevertheless, I'm going to come to you in a minute, Prince, but nevertheless, yeah. this issue has reared its head. And people who are listening and watching, yeah. they want to know what the... You're the publicity secretary of the right. PDP. They want to know what the PDP's position is on it. The position of the party is that we believe in fairness, recognizing that this country is comprised of several different tribes, considerations, whether religious, mm -hmm. whether cultural, we believe that a capacity to manage these contesting issues is what should make a determination about who governs this country. This is whether you come from the north or the south. I can say today, if the APC government, if the majority of Nigerians are happy, I bet you, not many people will remember that well, actually, you know, from the south. Right. Okay. I mean, and that's the truth. Right. The let's, challenge let's, why people are feeling uncomfortable is that the the real expectation of life is not there. And so, I mean, let's take some states. I'm not sure that many people will care where the governor of Akwaibom comes from in Akwaibom because he's performing. They can they can have a hope. There's a possibility of what we call the pursuit of happiness. Right. So your, your that, conclusion is that he's not performing, the current president. Oh, absolutely. Okay. He's not, he's not, let, let, let me come I to mean, you. I mean, it comes to the issues. Sure. And, and if you want the, the statistics, we can put it down. Okay, I'll, I'll come back to you in a minute. Let me come to you, Prince Kasim. Thank you for being patient. You're a student of history. From, the point, from that point of view, how do you see this issue of northern and southern rotation as it's reared up um, in the last few days, basically, with one group arguing that... Um, the South should clear the way for the North, and the, the South saying, well, no. Well, uh, thank you, Charles, for the opportunity of this discussion. I think, uh, for me, I don't think the North should bother to discuss about 2027 for power to be ceded to them. If you recall, one of the reasons that I canvassed for a southern presidency in 2023 was because Elijah Atiku Abubakar decided to change the political narrative of the PDP. Article 7 of his own constitution, Section C, stipulates that there should be rotation of power in an effort to reroute the polity into presenting an article seeing him as someone who can defeat the APC, they decided to package him. And since then, the center cannot hold up till now. So when you have that kind of scenario, where even a party is, is not able to follow the normative order of his own constitution by virtue of his own provisions as captured in his own constitution, then you have this kind of scenario of trying to twist the political algorithms of the country. For me, the North shouldn't be talking about power in 2027. The South, I want to use the word must, must be made to complete its eight years. Then power will now go to the North. Yeah, but let me, let me know, take you up on yeah. that. I mean... Should that, the, the argument that is being made, and this is not, I mean, yes, there's an element of emotiveness to it, but just being, you know, co clinically logical, should that rotation arrangement begin in 1999 when democracy returned and with it the executive presidency, which is when that arrangement came into force? the rotation arrangement. And by that reckoning, the South has ruled for 17 years and the North has ruled for 11 years. Or should it go all the way back to independence and you know, through the periods of military rule and so on, um, when you know, Nigeria Charles. had a prime minister, a, a ceremonial president, and subsequently military heads of state, and even at one stage, a military president. Charles. What is your reckoning? Charles, let me help you. In 1999, there was a southern president mm. in Obasanjo, eight years. In 2007, the South didn't agitate for presidency. The North did, and Yaradwa came on stream. When, after three years, he passed on, may he so rest in peace, 
his vice, as captured in the Constitution of Nigeria, took over. And in 2011, Elijah Tukahubaka contested the primaries with him, within the PDP. He lost, and President Jonathan was there. A party came on board, which was an amalgam of different political parties, called the APC now. And they were able to wrestle power from the PDP. So the PDP that had boasted that they were going to rule for 60 years, they were cut short after 16 years. Now, what happened to Yarada was not anybody's making. That was the making of God. In 2015, uh, uh, President Buhari won election. In 2019, the South ought to present a candidate, but they allowed the North to present a candidate in the PDP. And in that process, Elijah Tiku emerged. No Southern press uh, aspirants came on stream. They gave him with an understanding that when it is the turn of, this, of the South in 2023, that they will give opportunity for the South. 2023 came, the same factors, political hawks, and all of that, twisted the narrative and presented a tickle in, in defiance of its own rules, you know, as captured in, the, in its own constitution. And the likes of Debo, Logan and others looked the other way while they were scripting another one. And in the process, a tickle emerged. It was one of the reasons I left, I left the... It would have been a you left the PDP. I left the PDP. Right. It would have been a serious political suicide. After eight years of President Buhari, you have another northerner presiding over the country for another eight years. That would be sixteen unbroken years. No. We are not political slaves in this country. That must be properly synchronized in the consciousness of those who are trying to wield power in twenty twenty seven. Right. Okay. Secondly, we Very are, quickly, yes, so we can give we it a must, chance. We must consciously and deliberately mm. understand that there, there has to be a balance of the political algorithms of this country on the north-south uh, divide so that there could be a semblance of unity, political stability, and otherwise. Yeah, but the north because says it's not balanced. But that, that's the whole argument that, that they're making. The north, the north says it's not balanced. Since 1999, it has not been balanced. Uh, but, I don't mean to interrupt but you, but said, I've got to give him a chance. But you said 48 to. years. Well, to, that, that's uh, what I was asking sorry. you, and you yes. went on a different. No, no, of, it's not a different. It is still part of because we're talking about democracy. Okay, but there have been. If you look, if you write the names of president of this country, you see that there's another dominance. Yeah. Okay, let, let, me, let me bring you in, I mean, Debo. Yeah. Please respond to that, because I mean, let's face it, he made some very good points there. Which, which is the fact that some well, constitutional arrangement was, was changed, right, according to him. If that is the point you say is a good point. The challenge for me, and, I've, I, and I think that's more important, I'm not speaking for the North, and I'm not speaking against the North. I'm speaking about good governance, and that's very yeah, but, important. But, but, you're, you're, but, I, you're, but not, you're not addressing the question. The, he raised some particular issues about what happened in your own party. Absolutely. In 2019, I would like you to address that. In 2019, the good thing is that he was part of that team in 2019, in this party, before he left in 2023. He's entitled to his position. We as a party allowed for a free field for everyone who's qualified to contest. Mm. The Northerners contested, the Southerners contested, and someone won the election, the primaries. It happened to be at Tiku Abubakar. Right. If there has been democracy and that happens, I don't see why you blame anybody for that. The South at that time had the opportunity to have come together and he was part of a key player in that arrangement, if the South indeed truly wanted it, they could have come together, but there are at least eight or nine Southerners contested at that time. So where is the skillfulness that he now continues to say, oh, they we're so skillful, and that it has to be fair. Fairness is not given. You work for it. It's not on the part of God. You don't just give it out. So if the South indeed truly wanted it at that time, which is not what I'm conversing for. There was a primary which was considered free, fair, credible, and someone won, and who happened to be a northerner. 
I think for me, beyond this issue about whether somebody is from the north or from the south, for me, what is more important is that do we have good government? I understand that. But, I, I, but, but I, 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 isn't, isn't it a bit perverse yeah. for that same person mm -hmm. who you say emerged as a result of a democratic Absolutely. primary that to that now turn around yeah. in at this time and mm -hmm. start going on about the fact that the North has been shortchanged. And that's why I said to you that I'm not here to defend the North right. or the, and I don't speak for Atiku Abubakar. I speak for what I believe the party stands for right. and what they demonstrated in 2023 in opening up the gate. And so for, when you come into the that narrow, then we can't then achieve what happened in Ghana. And that's my worry. And I think it should worry any Nigerian. Right. Okay. To, to, to go into that prism of, oh, we're from this cocoon, then we'll continue to have this challenge of nation building that is, has elud eluded us for so and I, many, I have many to, years. And I have to admit that he has a point there. Do you think, Prince, that this rotation policy is becoming more contentious and more damaging to... Nigeria than good? You see, people talk, keep talking about rotation. Countries are not structured the same. We have about 450 or more ethnic multiplicities competing for attention in a very volatile Nigerian political landscape. Everybody seeking for relevance. And, but we have the sharp divides, the North and South dichotomy. And within the South, we still have the Southeast the south-south you know, and, and the southwest, the north-east, north-south, and uh, north-west and north-central. Uh, and so when you look at a country and you see something that is convenient for a country as disparate as Nigeria, you have to also try as much as possible to bury your own particular partisan interest and look at the bigger picture. And that bigger picture is that it's talking about good governance. Good governance is not domicile anywhere. It is domicile in the individual who has come through a process of democracy mm -hmm. to deliver on his promise. Absolutely. So, but there are competing factors. People don't tend to see this. Charles, tell Nigerians that you want to build a seven-star hospital, national hospital. The location will take you one year to debate because of our divisions. And you can't take these divisions away overnight. They exist. I have been an active political player. I have seen them in larger perspective. I've seen them in cocoon perspective, like he was saying. But the point is, if you have a virile opposition that is credible, that is able to stand its own and turn out alternative ideas, you know, that can help to moderate the per perception and perspectives of the citizenry. Then you now begin to talk. But you don't talk about all of these issues with a, an opposition that is in disarray. An opposition that is not even able to recognize the provision of its own constitution with respect to balancing or political power. Yeah, I'm going to come so, to him to respond to yes. that. But let me ask you this very quickly yes. before I do that. Because you were knocking the PDP about what happened and the fact that Atiku Abubakar was, in, in a sense, foisted on the people. Of course. You know, when well, in violation of their own constitution, constitution. and all the rest of it. Yeah, it was but foisted. wasn't that the same thing in the APC? Because everybody, including respected elders of politics in this country, said it was the turn of the Southeast. But the Southwest, driven by people like yourself, in, a, in exactly the same thing you're accusing the BDP of, foisted a candidate from the Southwest in violation of what many people believe to be a principle <laughs> that should have made I, it I, I, I'm not speaking, possible for. I, I, I'm just trying yeah, yeah, to, no, to no, see no, the no. balance I, I point. and to say I that as far as we're concerned, I mean, there's no difference between you two. Listen, I'm not talking about principles. I'm talking about provisions of your own internal instrument called the Constitution. Written, there is nothing like that in the Constitution of APC, North, South, whatever. This one was captured in Article 7, Subsection C 
of the PDP constitution. But you want us principle, to believe that your, your party I'm has principles no, I'm that coming. guide it. I'm coming. Principle is one. Law is another. Because once rules, it is captured... not law. You, well, rules. Well, uh, okay, rules captured in your yeah. constitution. Because what drives every political party are the provisions of your constitution. If you abuse them, there will be a problem. Why, what gave birth to G, G5? It's the same problem of trying to um, twist the rules and all of that. I, I don't want a situation where we'll be discussing North-South you know, as a subject matter because one person has interest. Well, he said that's what he no, said. No, no, listen, want yes. To you know, because one person has partisan interest. From, 19, from 20, uh, 1990 up to date, 34 years, Atiku Abubakar has been, you know, seeking for public office as president of the country. And so the, when I see his spokesperson and all of that going on television to try to justify that and all that, I see that as a as a misplaced priority. What, what I expect the PDP to do, eh, if they want to play serious opposition politics, is to put it out in order, help us generate ideas, provoke initiatives that will help to provide an alternative viewpoint that are realistic and also edible. OK, let me come to you. Deborah. Absolutely. And I thank you for agreeing with me. I'm not because agreeing with you. The I'm point I've just said to you, <laughs> I'm not I'm agreeing I'm with you. I'm very excited that you're... I'm saying that your party is no, not organized. Can I, can I, I just, I'm, I'm well, actually, in fairness to him, he's yeah. saying that your, your party is in disarray. I mean, that's what... That is his feeling. <laughs> and that you, your and party not, ought to come together to, to become view. a formidable and that's opposition. exactly... That was why it was counterproductive for a high public official like the Secretary to Government to begin this kind of conversation when he should be bothered about the state of the economy, the state of Nigeria, rather than create the diversionary com conversation as to stroke out this kind of conversation. Well, in, in, well, fairness, well, me, in I mean, fairness to you, I mean, I, I don't see Anthony Blinken coming out to talk about the politics between sort of the, the uh, Republicans. Uh, he doesn't get into and that, that. And that is why it's so disheartening that a secretary to government would raise this kind of issues just to blow the the challenges of the Nigerian people. Mm. And so for me, like I said, even if you don't agree, I mean, it's my friend, we agree, but on this, we agree that the fact that good governance is actually more superior. He said, and that's the point, that the opposition should come together so that the, the, the kind of conversation should begin to change so that there will be a movement away from this primordial sentiment about mm. north, south, east. You ask a question. Fairness. Equity is not one way. The Southwest has it today. Why was my friend not talking about Southeast at that time? It was convenient at that time because, begin. I am not here to talk about Antiqua Abaka mm. or the North. I am here to say, what do we do going forward, having regards to what we are as a nation, and taking a cue from the example of Ghana, we want to talk about real democracy, real institution, like the INEC. We should all agree on that. Because I done well, if it hasn't done well, we should talk about that. It needs to be reformed. Uh, exactly. Basically. And that is actually yeah. is an embarrassment that we have that. Mm. Unfortunately, uh, I, I agree with I mean, you. Uh, Unfortunately, a, a, a party, a oh. party that cannot reform itself, should not be talking about. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so what happens? That, that is that is a miscarriage. No, of, I mean uh, again, I mean that's the truth. Prince, you have a, you are entitled to your view, but right. I'm saying, I'm sure you would agree with me that ILEC can do better. It hasn't done well, and we should be united in saying that, mm. irrespective of the of the. Other but areas that we have. You have a point so there. Uh, Prince, we're, we're fast running out of time, so I need to get to you, get your response. But also, given how emotive this subject of rotation has become and how almost intractable it has become, is it perhaps time to make the point that people like Atiku Abubakar have been making for a long time, which is that the solution to all this is to restructure Nigeria with each region having more autonomy, which would keep Nigeria united, but significantly reduce power at the center and make it less attractive. Well, thank you very much. Uh, before I respond to you, I want to make the point that if, if the only reason why a man would speak about another institution is whether he's able to articulate the right issues, the right reforms in the institution that he represents. This is the voice of the opposition. 
you and me will concede to the fact that the PDP has not done well. In fact, they are even causing national distractions to a lot of us in terms of the kind of bottle up anger and movements in that party. Yeah, that but is, you could certainly one, make the argument that, that although point. we're all peripherally affected by what is going on in the PDP, we're much more affected if the APC is unable to properly govern this country and to properly come let up with good ideas me, to run the country. Let me respond to your point. You see, the point is that a party that cannot even resolve its own internal dissensions, cannot even articulate of, you know, uh, recruiting a good leadership. That's, that is just it. It's a given. If you, are, if, if you have a small country called PDP, and you are not able to resolve your issues, and you are talking about the bigger Nigerian contest, it doesn't add up. Back to your question. The president has been doing quite a number of things to also make the center, you know, less attractive so that there could be some level of uh, vibrations from the different regions and all of that. The local government autonomy and all of that is one of those Yes, points. that's a commendable yes, thing. Yes, the tax, the tax reform bill that is right in the front banana is another. There are quite a number of things that he wants to do. But you see, the same politics of North and South is driving the discourse. Where should it be? People are not looking at Nigeria from the ownership structure. People are looking at Nigeria from the perspective of where I come from. Because within the structure of this country, we still put in our record and data collection, state of origin and all of that, zone and what have you. So if you want Yeah, but you're the government in power. You should change that. That's what I'm saying. But you are, right. seeing, you are seeing things being done in the right perspective to even promote regionalism and what have you. But you can see the kind of utterances and discussions. The tax reform B has almost created a north-south divide in terms of discussion. True. So, what I am saying is that it will take some time for you, for you to con uh, begin to leverage on national outlook of everything you want to do because of this primordial, deep-seated, regional you know, affiliations. And you can't run away from it because you have a country that is skewed in a way you talk about education in the south is more solid than in the north and all of that. They, they tell you about uh, uh, amenities, infrastructure development and what have you. So until we begin to see ourselves as Nigerians and not from the prison of southeast, south-south, southwest, before we begin to make progress. Okay. And the point well, Charles, is, and the point I, is I, that... I have to go to Charles, him. Yes. Charles, and I the mean, point is that... Sorry, let me just learn. Yeah. And the point is that you can't do that overnight. Yeah, okay. You cannot. You've made that point. Charles, I mean, this is very interesting. I'm happy that Prince is here tonight. Number one, I, I hope he can just win himself away from the fixation about PDP. If that is the wish, that PDP is not able to run itself then they are in for big trouble. Of course. Let us, let us focus on your governance, on what you have done, and the damage that you have done. You, today you are benefiting from the madness, in quote, of INEC in rigging elections recklessly. <laughs> and then you think it's okay no. because it is, it, today it feels good to you. Uh, you know, I mean, can I finish? I'm but I can tell you this. The you. challenge is this. Uh, if we are to achieve what you are saying about us coming together where primordial sentiment will not take the front burner, then you and I have an obligation for our generation to say that as it should be. Are we going to be practicing democracy? Or are we going to do a king or emperor? We will make a determination as a nation. Mm. Are we going to have true federal states or a country? It's a determination, and this conversation can go on. Yes, it can happen overnight, but we must begin to take a step to say, this is exactly what we want to do. And then look at the best practices worldwide. We saw next door neighbor, they conducted an election. In a just said, where you come from, we're contesting election. Election should have been formed. In Ghana, in 24 hours, they have an election. I think that should be something we should aspire to as a people. 
irrespective of whether I come from the north or the south. I agree. And, and, and but I he doesn't disagree with you. And, and I'm, no, 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 I disagree with him using, using very... No, 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 but you don't disagree with the points that he's making that we should aspire to have proper, as, free, fair elections I'm not in this I'm not, I don't have a problem with that, Charles. Yes. But the problem is that what you see as not free might be free to me. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? No, 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 no. It no, 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 no. You see, to be we are free no, to no. the Nigerian No, no, no. Listen, listen. And to the world. I'm not Absolutely. from Congo. I'm a Nigerian. Listen. Nigeria, <laughs> Nigerian <laughs> politicians have come to the, uh, to the point that when it is not opposition that is winning election, I neck is bad. When the ruling party wins election, I think it's... No, no, but it bad. is not just the opposition. See, see, Excuse yes. me, it is not just the opposition. There are election observers who are independent and objective. Yeah. There are journalists yeah. who are independent <laughs> and objective. Okay, no. There are people who go there. There are the people themselves who <laughs> assess just, the quality of just. the elections. And each time, all those people have said unquestionably, ineluctably, those elections were... Re Charles. I mean, replete with the electoral malpractice. Charles, Charles, don't let me begin to castigate observers because I'm an active participant of the Nigerian electoral process. We've got no, one, one minute. One minute to go, I will yeah. go, yes, I will land. And then we you see we're, we're, you see observers, which, we, we, when you see observers, are they the same observers who will come and be, pretend to be observers and their members of political party and they speak from the perspective of their political party? Come on. No, that, yes, they are there. That's not no, that they they are, no, to no, that no, level. No, 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 Please, 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 Charles, please. You are, you are not on the feed. I'm, I'm, beyond, I'm on the feed. I'm telling you. Right. Yeah, with, feed with, copious, with copious examples. You don't tell me you are an observer. You leave Abuja here. You go to Benin, for example. You want to uh, observe election. You don't have personnel. You don't have uh, the, 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 the logistics, you don't have anything. You sit down in Bini and you write results, a uh, report that covers the entire 4,516 polling units in the industry. Okay. I won't take that as a So you just, don't agree. So well, the point well, is that the point is that the, the PDP that is unable to put its act together fixation. cannot no cannot begin fixation. to discuss issue of leadership. Right. Because leadership is talks about reconciliation. Okay. Talks about I, I think you've made that point. I'm afraid bargain. I am out of time. Yes. You got 20 seconds to, I'm, I'm, to I'm, rebut I'm, and we're done. Because it's not even reporting. Reporting. I'm, not, 20 seconds. I'm not even reporting anything. Right. We have agreed here, and I'm happy he's saying that, that is, if he believes that indeed elections, for instance in Edo State, were free, fair, where are we living to that? However, it is whether this country is safe actually want to succeed as a nation. If we don't work on that, the fact that... Okay. Yeah, yeah the fact that yeah. I have not done certain things right. right does not mean that... Because judge justice is not only it when you say... Okay, I, I, I think you've made it that. It is only you, when... Yeah, you're, you're, you're making several man, points rather a, than one a, point. A, <laughs> just a reasonable man on the street, what is his perception? Right, okay. Process? On that note... I want to thank you very much indeed. <laughs> Debo Olaguaba is a lawyer, <laughs> national publicity secretary of the PDP. And uh, Prince Kasima Febua is a political commentator, former Edo State Commissioner of Information, former Edo State Governorship aspirant, and a leading member of the APC. Absolutely brilliant having the two of you here. Thank, thank you, you so much.